And we are live. Good evening, afternoon, uh, mornings, wherever you may be. Hi, my name is Greg Claiborne. I am one of the uh, three Black Pratt grads, and this is a photo talk with those same three Black Pratt grads. I'm Greg Claiborne. That's Mark Skinner. And that's Mr. Kenny Nelson, uh, photographer extraordinaire, Mr. Leica himself. Um, well, today's uh, conversation, I wanted to uh, start, well, start off, first of all, hey, go NASA, <laughs> go NASA, you see the NASA, they, uh, they, uh, they uh, connect, Mr. Musk, thank you, Elon, for uh, connecting the uh, Falcon to the uh, space station again, and uh, they're doing all kinds of great stuff at NASA, and and what they're doing, we really don't know. They're probably aliens. Anyway, so today's conversation, we're going to have, I, I really wanted to talk about that unexpected photographic moment that just keeps you going, coming back to photography, keeps you shooting. And uh, I wanted to call this one just unexpected, that ooh moment, you know, when you, when everyone, the visuals in through the viewfinder or on your screen come through and you look and you're like, ooh, and you snap the shutter or, you know, and... It just, it's that moment of excitement that uh, keeps you going through it. Uh, you know, photography is challenging. It's expensive. And uh, uh, now, thank God, with the uh, phones and, uh, you know, uh, prosumer cameras. And even uh, if you take it to the next level and go all in, um, photography is a uh, an activity that never disappoints. And it will expand and go as far as you can take it. So um, with that, do you guys have anything? If not. No, just welcome. <laughs> Let's get into it. All right, Let's welcome. Get... Here we go. So for me, uh, I guess we can go to our, our first shot. I, uh, I kind of liked one of the biggest things I loved about photography is that, um, you know, well, like back in the day, you know, because we, we've been classically trained photographers. So back in the day, you know, they said, uh, you know, pictures worth a thousand words. A photograph doesn't lie. And that can't be further than the truth. Photography, photographs lie all the time. But that doesn't mean that you can't have a lot of fun with it and you can't have a lot of those ooh moments. Like this one. <laughs> well, most, unless like the grav gravitational pull on Earth has changed or the skies are Titan or something like that. There's no way on Earth he's going to get up that high in, in, in the air. But it's an awful lot of fun to look at. <laughs> so go on. This is a sequence. I did a homage to Mr. Moybridge with a sequence of images. So you go to the next one, Mr. Nelson. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. So okay. Oh, First, yeah. First Third, one. Yeah. Second one. Yeah. And third. And Bavada Bing. You know, he's ready to <laughs> throw it in there. Now, of course, you know, I, the way I framed it, I have the people looking up in the basket and kind of in the middle. And he's actually looking down at the basket, you know, which is uh it could be true, but my goodness, it is not. He's, he's one of those <laughs> <laughs> basketball trampoline uh, performers that he was at at the uh, Staples Center here in L.A. And uh, I just enjoyed just the uh, the perspective of it. You know, I, I kind of I saw what was happening, so I got myself into a position where I could have, you know, spectators in the background and try to make a you know a whole whole image. And for me, this the the first one. Uh, where the guy is like putting the ball through his legs and he's like rising up. And I used to play ball, and that's a good feeling when you when you're feeling it and you get that uh, up get get up in the air as high as you can and then uh, start to go for it. But um, it's uh, you can I mean once you once you get used to what the camera can and can't do, you can exploit those things about the camera. You know perspective. You know, lighting, motion, all of that, you know, it could have added to this a little more, uh, slowing the shutter down a little bit, you know, popping some light in there to get a drag effect. But uh, I just wanted to capture one that was um, real enough to be real, but a little bit stretched enough to be kind of an exaggeration of reality. <laughs> And that's, so, that's so this I, is an so this is an exhibition performance. What we're looking at, correct, correct. That, I don't know if you uh, if you ever been to a a live game or uh, yeah or, or whatever. And during halftime, they'll have the guys come out and they'll set a trampoline up and they'll do flips and dunks and all kinds of 
you know. Well, no, I, I haven't seen that. I think the live games I've seen were well, well before the 21st century as a kid. So uh, I'm not really, um, and, and that, and I, and that, and I've seen a lot of uh, high school sports games because I photograph it, but otherwise I, right. I you know, I, I haven't seen any uh, pro games in a while. Oh, too bad. Too bad. You should get out and enjoy one or two, Mr. Skinner. I mean, you got, oh, now, now that, now that the uh, pro teams on the East coast about time, thank you, Jay-Z and, and uh, Spike Lee for, for shaming those, uh, owners to get uh stack the rosters for the new jersey or excuse me the brooklyn nets new jersey <laughs> the nets and the knicks um now they're getting they're getting a the roster so it might be might be good to see you know and then those guys do some stuff that's amazing that's like it that puts these guys to shame and this is fake so um see, know, I, I i got i got i got to do this to you though right so when uh -oh. i was your when I was your age, oh my the, the, glo the globe trotters used to do that without a trampoline. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Every one of them. They did some stuff with the trampoline. They, you know. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. Globe trotters would do some amazing stuff, you know, right. no doubt. <laughs> when you were my age, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, moving right along. Um, the other side. The other side of photography, I should probably started with this one first, but the other side of photography is, um, for me, you know, the photojournalistic side of it is where you can take a moment and then magnify it. You know, this was uh, the memorial also at Staples Center, you know, a uh, 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 month later, month or so later after uh, Kobe had passed. And uh, just to see the outpouring of... Um, sorrow and love and joy and just the range of human emotions uh being expressed for for uh kobe bryant and his family was just uh amazing you know i, I couldn't stay away I, I thought i could just stay and watch it on tv and be okay with it but i went down there and i was just amazed floored humbled you know you you picked the verb or expedited verb uh, you know uh adjective to, to to express that and um it all fit you know this guy this guy he found a spot he sat down he wrote like a couple of notes you know rest in peace kobe and he just sat there and cried you know i'm like i i had no idea the impact that um that kobe had on the city and his fans and uh you know to to evoke such an outpouring so um, for me, this was, it was unexpected for sure. Cause, uh, things happen, you know, um, real tears, you know, very unexpected and definitely, you know, an ooh moment in the, in the, uh, emotional side of it where, um, man, I, I wanted to get closer, but I stayed respectful as so I wanted to get the tears were hitting the ground and that's all like a slate or concrete and it was changing color and, I was just, I was just amazed at um, the outpouring that I saw from him and a number of, a number of people throughout the day, and uh, you know the news reports and others. So um, that's one of the great things I love about photography that it can, it can capture the absurd and make it just as vivid as anything, but it could also capture the very human and very uh, poignant and magnify that as well. So um, for something unexpected, something in that ooh moment, those are my submissions. And mm -hmm. I'd love to hear your comments. What do you guys think? Anybody, anybody? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's very interesting, of course, that we are able to actually read what he wrote. So, you know, uh -huh. that's, that's pretty uh, prophetic in itself, you know, uh, yeah. RIP Kobe and Gigi. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah I, I, you're good. And of course, the the teardrops which you mentioned are also visible there, so it's uh, quite powerful for sure. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's a very I think it's a very powerful photo. I don't I don't know if the billboard is necessary, as Ken pointed out. If one yeah. really views the photo, and if you were close enough to get in this crop to get, I mean, it shows you immediately who it is. So it's good for uh, a news feed and a news, uh, something in a news cycle. But if it were just something on a wall somewhere, I would, I would definitively have cropped closer, maybe made it, make it a, 
uh, horizontals is to show the isolation. Um, the, and the, the thing that would have been unexpected for me was how it was written. You know, he, you know, he writes this impromptu memorial himself. And even after the memorial, because that's a cathartic act, he's still broken up after, you know, you know, to, he, he can't express, you know, the grief well enough to really, you know, can, you know, maintain composure even after, you know, putting uh, chalk, I'm presuming chalk, chalk to the ground to, to, to kind of write something to kind of, you know, see it written, you know? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty powerful. And I don't, I, you know, it, I had a relationship with this today, not with this particular image, but just in terms of uh, what happens in an emotional moment. And basically what was happening was that I was listening to actually um, can't trust it today, <laughs> you know, but Chuck D and okay. right? and so I was actually looking public at enemy the, public enemy and I was looking at the words and the words are extremely extremely powerful words and I was like and I, I always said the words and you know sometimes you don't know all the exact words to the to the song but they're in front of me right now I'm looking at them and you're reading them and you're like holy cow mm. and it's been what 30 years <laughs> mm. Uh, yeah, happening. thereabouts. Yeah, and that those words that are spoken and can't trust it are powerful, and they affect me today, thirty mm. years ago. So, in relationship to what's happening here, yeah, the expanse of time in terms of words and the emotions that were felt during the words, yeah, I don't think they disappeared at all, man. Yeah, good, nope. good, good art does that. Good poetry, not not blowing any horns, but good poetry talks through time, you know. Uh, good, 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 for, good art talks through time. So yeah, for sure. And whew. yeah, I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm wasted. <laughs> no, no, well, go on, express that. What's going on? What's yeah, no, no, no. I'm just emotionally wasted just thinking about it again. So. Okay. Yeah. So what do you think? It. I mean, what is, what is it that's capturing you? Well, I mean, the emotion of that, people what, suffering. What moment are you having? You're having an ooh moment. Well, no, I'm just hum, human suffering, man. It's terrible, oh. you know? So, yeah. And so I'm making that connection right now. So empathy, and, sympathy. And unfortunately, it's continuous, too. Yeah. yeah unfortunately, it's just a continu continual. It's not continuous. Yeah. It's continual. Yep. Yep. So. Well, it's part of that, that, that human experience thing, something that we, we all have been through joy and, and pains and, you know, all the whole uh, cycle of emotions so that mm -hmm. when we see it, we yeah. can identify with it and you yeah. know be like empathetic. You said uh, yeah. to to whatever that emotion is. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and I mean, not everybody can capture that. You know, some some uh, yes some some writers try to write love poetry or love about you know about their pain and losing a love or something, and it just kind of falls flat or it's kind of ingenuous. But you know, with the right pen, the right paper, and the right writer, um, they can create create something that 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 just uh speaks through time like i said same yeah. thing with uh you know artistry and painting or, or photography documentary more can they coexist together i think they can coexist together but i agree um it's like it's like when all the elements come together you know it's like i know you you, you say he wasn't a, a ball player or an athlete or something but sometimes when you're out there on the court you could do no wrong all the elements, the ball's clicking, the team is working, you know, the ball is moving like, like never. You watch, you know, the uh, NCAA tournaments. I don't know if you guys do that, but, you know, they're, they're whipping that ball and that ball is like, you know, and then somebody puts it up and it's just like a perfect arc, nothing but your net, you know, mm -hmm. or um, my gosh, anything. You, you roller skate, Ken. Yeah. When you see them out there and they're, the, yeah. the groove oh, yeah. is bouncing. Yeah. And, you know, they're doing stuff that, you know, they may have never done before, you know. Yeah, it's folks in the zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. in the zone, in the zone. And uh, so photographically, when uh, you're in the zone and all of the elements come together and you capture that image, you know, there's there's definitely, for me, but, that, that's what but, I would consider. But let me ask you, I got to ask you a question, though. See, I get all the unexpected portions of the, the Kobe Bryant uh, memorial photo. But with the... Uh, with the exhibition shot, 
being yeah. performed. Right. I mean, I think the only unexpected aspect of that is that there's a trampoline that's outside the frame because right. it, it's a, it, you know, since it's an exhibition, he's not, mm -hmm. a, you know, he's not set up as a team, you know, you know, you can tell it's not a, a game or live game. Um, well, you break away, but mm. go ahead. The, only, the first one, and I think you even pointed out the first one, you look and you go, Holy mackerel, how, how high can this guy jump? Dude's you know, <laughs> you, yeah, you know, you look and go, well, you know, how do you do that? And, uh, but I think by, by the time you get to the third one, you, you say, oh, okay, there's a tramp, you, there's something else going on here. And then yeah. you, once you said there's a trampoline, uh, you, you know, I think for me as a, as a, casual uh, observer i go oh okay i get it you, the feel first little, one, you feel a little betrayed a little yeah down. the first one right there makes me go oh wow this is incredible how sure. did he yeah. do this but, you know but i think the additional information right. start starts to erode at my suspension of disbelief you know See, it, i wasn't i was not going to say anything i was just going to or maybe that one yeah maybe that one like maybe that one by itself but i think the first one i like more because to me it's more anticipatory this right. one i i know he's going to, to slam it yeah this this one i don't know if he's going to make it but he's certainly in the right spot right right but that's 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 part of the fun of it you know yeah. I, I wasn't going to say anything about uh you know how he got up that high i was just going to leave it let it talk for itself and uh misleading as it may be if i didn't give you that extra information you know you you would have to you know come to your own decision as yes. far as well i was going to ask <laughs> yeah. yeah i was going to ask how did the guy yeah. you, you told me before i asked I was, I was gonna say, how did that guy jump that? I've watched games and I've never seen anyone jump quite that high. I, I don't watch it a lot, but I've never seen that. It's called Mad Hops. The guy's got Mad Hop. Look at the caps on that boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. Well, what did, what did Spike uh, used to say? Uh, it's the shoes. There you go. There you go. See, you could have. Was it PF Flyers? Ooh, I just dated myself. It's the Nikes. Yeah, I'm sure it's the Nikes. <laughs> PF Flyers. Oh my gosh. Run faster. You're, you're, supposed, you're, you're supposed to say the Pro Kids. <laughs> oh my gosh, Pro Kids. I remember yeah. those. That was that was the that was the shoe before I discovered Arch Support and Nikes. <laughs> all right, that's all I got. That's my ooh moments. And uh, next time I won't say anything. I'll let you guys, you know. Let you wrap your wrap your wrap your heads around it. I got some others. I'll show. You you un you unood the photo. Yeah, I did unood that one a little bit. <laughs> okay, all right. You want me to take it from there? Yeah, yeah. Who's up? Who's up? Okay, all right. Well, I'll preempt this by saying, as a street shooter, I'm looking for the ooh moment. <laughs> Right. Makes sense. Yeah. As it's, it's sort of that's all I'm there to do and, and try to figure that out. And, you know, either you you either you 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 think you capture it and then you confirm you capture it in the edit or you think you captured it and you confirm that you did not capture it in the edit. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah. And those are that's the suspension of uh, digital versus film film. You had to wait, you know, 48, 24, 48 hours before you get the results. Digital. No such thing. If you shoot in color, if you're shooting black and white and you process your own film, maybe a little bit faster. But I won't suspend you anymore. My first ooh moment or yeah, unexpected is this shot, you know. And so, you know. What's going on here, right? Somebody's surprised, you know? And, you know, capturing moments of uh, unanticipated uh, funny things on the street are kind of cool, you know? And, you know, something's going on, and it's up to you to figure out what it is, but what is presented to me and what was in front of me at the moment that it happened was so hilarious to see. You know, it's like he's and, been saving that can of silly string a little so long that he, he he wasn't he wasn't able to do what he was hoping to do. Yeah, but uh, I mean, you know, some dysfunction going on there. Yeah, uh, but what's interesting is just the reactions between them two. Yeah. You know, it, it's so amazing. You know, and you know, you could you could sort of see him as a prankster, and you know, and she of course is totally surprised. 
you know <laughs> so right. it you know those moments of like that are just sweet to see so, so let me uh, ask you a question was he surprised after the silly string went to the ground instead of all over her or did he kind of just make a point not to like you know ruin her clothing with the silly string um i i i this um photograph is kind of a long time ago i think it's 2016 2015 so i don't mm -hmm. remember the certain circumstances around it um and i just what i recall is that i would have liked to have been there five seconds before this uh if i were there five seconds before this it would have been a slightly different thing going on oh, and i is but uh you know all in all i mean this is not a this is not a a, a a second, a B roll or a B shot. I think it's an A shot. Uh, I think it's equivalent to what I would have shot, but I would just like to have had the shot five seconds before this to compare it to this one. Uh, well, well, you know what's really good? What's really, really good? There's a guy behind the can, behind the hand with the can. He uh, looks like he looks like he's smiling. Uh -huh. So he looks like he is subtextually expressing the joy of the prank that the gentleman on the right is about to play. Like he's in on it. <laughs> yeah, like like he's in on it, but he's also like the the he's like he's the id of the mm -hmm. of the guy who's who's you know about the sprayer, and you know I, you can't tell whether he actually uh, uh, got her with the with the silly string or not. You just know that she's only so upset, but she's she's you know grinning and bearing it literally, yeah. and you know the idea of grinning and bearing it because she's wearing a fur collar on her on on her on her hood. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of silly wordplay there but yeah. it, you know yeah um, my understanding from what's on? presented to you is that he was unsuccessful in totally annihilating her with the silly string uh mm -hmm. because it's just one string left in the can and it's dr driddling down the side of her jacket on her arm sleeve so uh, and there's nothing else except maybe some little bits over here of going mm -hmm. on but so that's just to give you a clue maybe she cleaned it off already and he's just making a second attempt mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> i got there <laughs> this was this this was what was in front of me. <laughs> you know, and, it, you know, c compared to, because uh, you've seen your other, uh, some of your other street uh, images, and it's it's just kind of out of place for New York, because New York is kind of dour and business and channel vision. And, and in the middle of all that New York chaos, you capture this light moment. Uh, and I think that's like spot on. Yeah. I like that a lot. Well, this is one where uh, I know you are a tr pure full frame, and I get I respect that. Uh, I think this is one that would be even better served if you crop the bottom and the right side to the same proportions and just sort of cropped it just below her her hand and uh, just to the right of his uh, his coat. I don't think the person on the far right and the little the child. I don't think they really add much, and because the person in the background between them has uh his their back towards us I, I think you can crop them anywhere in there and it'll be okay yeah no yeah. well no 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 and i was going to respond to that and i was thinking about that today because i had posted an image on um on uh, one of my on my instagram account and there was one little piece of that image that bothered me bothered me a little bit mm -hmm. but then i started to run think about the full frame aesthetic and the full frame aesthetic for better or for worse, for me, sort of stands there. And although, and I and I understand that because there's a need to perfection, make things perfect. And and I and I sympathize and empathize with that because I understand because I and sometimes I do crop uh, when I. But most 90 90 percent of the time, ninety five percent of the time, even though I know I would like to crop it, I re, I resist the urge to do it. Uh, right. because, and that's honorable. It's respectable. Yeah. I, I I get that a hundred percent. Yeah, because the intent to me is if it creates a tension for you to not have it perfectly done in terms of a crop, then that in a way has achieved its result in creating an emotion within you for good or for bad. Greg, you got what I meant? Yeah, no, no, I, I, I get what you mean, but I mean, okay. I was kind of uh, in, in opposition to, oh, sorry, I hit the hand on the wrong part of the camera. Um, it's like, uh, you know, and, and, and I kind of uh, chime with, uh, with part of what Mark was saying as far as the, uh, 
you know, keeping it full frame, you know, keeping it 100, sorry. Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, trying to crop, you know, in opposition to what Mark was saying, trying to crop, crop that would be like, um, I don't know, all, all of a sudden it just popped like a, there's that Pratt training. It's like Sunday afternoon on the island of the Grand Jete by mm -hmm. uh, Therat. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, well, where do you crop that image? There's so much going on. Yeah. You know, you could just crop it inside the, you know, the main, main, you know, uh, design main characters, you know, or you could have cropped a little part of the river or you, mm -hmm. know, you could come up and made it, you know, a whole different area. But I like that you left it full frame and what happens, happens. You know? Yeah. What, what, what do they call it in film? Or, um, you know, your, your, uh, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting else. No, I can't forget. Anyway, the, uh, the Mizen scene, you know, where, where yeah. you just capture what's there. And mm -hmm. I like the way that, I like the way it's full. I like the way it lies, you know. And, and the moment that you captured, I think, uh, carries all of the accidental things that happened uh, elsewhere in the frame. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. And I, yeah. And great, Mark, I agree that cropping is, is appropriate. And it actually it would be good here, but I always re resist the urge unless I internally feel a need to do it and only to a small degree when I really crop. Um, you'll hardly ever see me with a square crop, a square cropped image. Right. Um, and if you see a square cropped image from me, it's probably photographed on a six by six. <laughs> Yeah, right, right. That's the same the same crop. here. It's like that that you know, if you see a if you see a square image from me. Nine times out of ten, well, more like yeah, like nine times out of ten, uh, it, it was originally done as a square, or certainly it was originally conceived as a square. And now you have uh -huh. these cameras with multiple formats. It's, uh, you know, you can kind of do the whole frame, but know you're going to make it a, a crop or, or both vice versa. But uh, ninety percent of the time, it really is like I know this is going to be a square when uh -huh. I photograph it, and that's how I, that's how I photograph it. Yep. Uh, so I, I, I get you. I, yep. I get you, and it makes it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I just think in this particular image, be, it just, you know, yep. either that either that, or you can say, well, you, you could have been a little closer. But I, I think yeah. if you were closer, you would have been become part of the scene because their attention would have turned from what they were doing to you. So yeah. I get it, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay, guys, let's keep moving on. I, w I won't begrudge this thing anymore. Yeah, uh, I, I, I love It's a great pick. Yeah. So, so yeah. It's, it's just, you know, I'm nitpicking. That's yep. It. Here's my second one for you. Unexpected aha moments or yeah, aha, right. ooh aha moments, you know. And you know, you're you're and again, I what it's happening is I'm usually just standing around places and just people are within my personal space or within my uh, two foot, three foot, eight, six foot sphere of space around me. And this is just I just you know whatever happens happens and, and you know some interesting stuff happens. So this is shot from the hip. And, um, you know, you're just seeing something, uh, you know, people sharing food. But uh, the look on the, the, the young guy's face is one of surprise as to, you know, um, you're taking my food. <laughs> it looks like, yeah, I was about to say, it looks like uh, he's getting you know? jacked for his dog or something there. <laughs> you know, so those ooh moments and, you know, those family moments come together. And so, uh, you know. I just like times like this, and yeah. when I they 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 connect me with with, with the humans the humanity with humanity, mm -hmm. and uh, you know the and just how people relate to each other, family not family, but you would figure that this is family uh, that's doing this to one another. So, yeah. Well, I, I think if I think if his mouth weren't open and her mouth weren't open, and the you know his eyes weren't quite as closed as they were and uh -huh. she weren't wearing a little bit of eye makeup you know it's like the eye and the eyebrow and then the mouth and the other eye and then the the noses are very like all of those yeah are, are very much the same and they so because there's such similarity in the shapes of each feature uh, -huh. uh the profile and then the full face juxtaposed against one another is something we've seen before but this is different because it's not contrived it's very naturally uh, uh, created. It's a naturally yeah. created juxtaposition. So that's really engaging. I think the, you know, and then, you know, we, we've all as a kid have had to share food, uh -huh. you know, maybe not as an adult, some people would, but certainly uh -huh. as a child, you've had to yeah. share food with somebody, a parent, a yeah. sibling, a cousin, a friend, somebody. Yeah. So I yeah. think we can all relate. And it's very interesting to see, um, you know, very neat, clean, 
people sharing one slice of pizza, there's a, you know, there's a little tension there for that. So it's, you know, you yeah. look and go, this is, yeah. uh, you know, it's a good photo. Yeah. You, you, it's funny because I was, I just thought of something, you know, when you had total ownership of your own food, right? No, it's my food. No, it's mine. No, it's mine. Right. You remember that? It's like, I'm not sharing with anybody. And, you know, you get to the point where it's like, well, yeah, I, you know, I want it for myself. No. <laughs> you know? It goes out the window when you have a companion, you know, and yes. your girlfriend wants a piece of your pizza. Guess yes. what? You yeah. don't have autonomy over the pizza anymore. Or well, you go parents. out for it or something. Yeah. Or, 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 or if you have a child, that's just the same, yeah. you're, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's we're we're not in the my 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 business anymore. We're in the us us us. So you can see that being said in some way, shape, or form, right? That is correct. Okay, <laughs> okay. Although there, I will say this: what? after the pandemic, you might not see so so much of this so much because we're all hyper conscious now of washing our hands and wearing face masks. So everyone's very uh, germ and virus and bacteria conscious now. So it might take a few years before people return to this, uh, even with family members, the ability to be so easygoing with uh, mm -hmm. sharing of uh, food and, and, and drink in that way. Okay, interesting perspective. We could do a series on like post-COVID photography, see how people, like a psychosocial... Uh, uh, study on how people are behaving now, you know, because you're some of your, your shots are great as far as it's like you're saying, it's a perfect example of how, how we behave before, you know, <laughs> yeah. this is not probably won't happen much, you know, no. uh, post post COVID. Yeah, well, it's it's going to be its own process because as a street shooter, I continue to street shoot. So whatever happens after this time will continue to be recorded in basically the same way. So um, I'll just have to keep uh, ideas open as to how to compare and contrast before and after images uh, during the time. Well, I'll tell you, but between all of the uh, the PPE and the scaffolding, I don't know how you're going to be able to proceed. Yeah. You know, it, it's going to be a, it's like going to be in another planet practically. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. Let's keep, let me keep moving on, guys. I don't want to take up too much time. Um, I just think this is a pretty interesting Ulan moment for me. You know, you 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 walk into a space and and you compose a photograph, and then something shifts to make the photograph different. You know. So I, you know, I came up to this shot, and I just thought this uh, this person leaning against this. Uh, this uh, subway entrance, um, you know, was kind of interesting. And then, you know, and then there was someone inside, you know, who was standing there and they turned and they looked and it shifted the whole image mm -hmm. a different degree. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Right. And cool so, shot though, Mr. Nelson, very cool shot. You know, and so things like this, when things like this happen, you're like, oh, wow. Okay. And you just said, I don't anticipate this. But it's an anticip and it's in a moment where it's like, oh God, you just made my shot. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, I, 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 I think it's I think it's wonderful. Uh -huh. Um I think uh I think uh you should send a copy to Cooper Union. <laughs> <laughs> you know, put plant a flag on it, say Pratt, uh -huh. <laughs> you know. <laughs> say, <laughs> oh, just a thought. Yeah, okay. is that, is, that that is Cooper Union in there, right? This is uh, yeah, Astor Place. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, and I'm gonna go through my last one, guys, because I I don't want to take up too much time. Very cool uh, shot, Mister Nelson. I, I think it's ex I think it's exquisite. I really do. Yeah, you know, in my days of you know going home on a subway, and you anticipate, you know, I'm walking up. I'm actually on the escalator, and I'm like, okay. I'm trying to do something. I want to see what happens. So I, I'm standing to the right. You know, it's people when they're walking up and they walk past you to the left. So, okay, I'm just going to try and capture what's going on as the people pass me by. So as each person passes me by, the camera's just pointed to the left, you know, and I'm just, as each person passes, I'm just clicking the shutter, you know, and then this person walks past and I'm just amazed, you know, because the angle her, the angle in which this person's walking up is almost perpendicular to the angle of the escalator. And, you know, that, that, you know, that's just, wow. You know, people usually walk straight up, but this person wasn't as, as in case in the woman who's, who's walking down, which is she's standing vertical, but this person is taking so much effort 
to walk up, which is causing them to lean forward. And the arc of the back is kind of amazing. And of course, the hand uh, holding the rail just is, you know, just interesting. So this to me was unexpected because I wasn't sure what was going on to the left of me. I was just pointing the camera in that direction and anticipating that that person would be within the frame and just taking the exposure. Well, you know, it's funny you should say that unexpected, but I think you have expectations. And what you've done is you've found a way to bring the the working blind element that we had in film photography back to digital. So by not actually looking through the viewfinder and, and sort of uh, – setting your frame up in a way where as the uh, subjects passed, you would be able to capture them in a space. I mean, you kind of had an idea of how the space would, would function, yeah. Yeah. you know? So you knew that you, you had an estimate based on understanding the focal length and, yep. and everything. So you use, you use the culmination of all your knowledge to, yep. to, to, to say, okay, there's a good chance I've got, I'm going to get something here. Now, whether you took this yep. one photo or 30 yep. is not important. Right. The key is that this is the one that you go, aha, this is my yep. select. Yeah. And so, so I, I think it's good. I personally am a little, uh, you know, anxious these days about, you know, taking uh, photographs, um, you know, people unaware in that way, but that's mm -hmm. a personal thing for me. But mm -hmm. as a, if for as a as a street photographer, I, I think you've accomplished your task, uh, and I think um, I think you know it's the culmination of, of everything that uh, we certainly were uh, trained to do in in that regard. Mm -hmm. What what makes this uncomfortable for you? I mean, you don't like street photography much. For yourself, but what would make well, it? Well, in, in all honesty, I I think because of the possibility of, of because of social media, uh, and the fact I mean there was a time when you would take a photograph, uh, usually it was a black and white photograph, but you would take a photograph, and uh, there, things would happen in the streets, and you weren't sort of invading, you know. I think I have a a, a stronger sense these days of in, in, invading someone's. Uh, maybe I'm going to coin a phrase here. They're you know their sense of their their psychic they're not psychic but their yeah their psychic sense of 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 sovereignty you know we're we're capturing people street photographers uh, usually when they are pretty much lost in their their own activities and well, so they're being themselves they're being themselves exactly and so. at this point in my life I I don't like uh, encroaching. Uh, I, I feel it's a little bit of an invasion um, of their privacy, but they're, they're doing these things in public. But I think it's the fact that they don't expect to be photographed that I personally am challenged with. You know, it, you know, it's not something I, it, it, and I think that's because when we were in school, one of the things a lot of people used to do is they would go to uh, Canal Street and they'd photograph the fruit uh, cart merchants and the fish mongers and things like that. And everybody who was, you know, sort of just trying to make a living. And I always felt that, uh, it was some sort of invasion of people's privacy in a way they were, they were kind of conducting business, but you had to conduct business in an open air, uh, shop. But I, I, I never, I was never comfortable with that aspect of it. And so did, did you ever like, like say, or set up, you could you could have set up a studio backdrop. That would have been very cool too. And say, oh yeah, hey, yeah. Would you, would I, you stand I, I, here as I took a picture. Now he got like a street vendor, you know, with his right. wares, and he's you know still sweating from right, right. toting some stuff. And you put him on a stark background, like right? Abaddon but that's did. a but but that. that's a different photographic experience from the street photographic experience oh, aesthetic. Ass. The idea is your you're capturing life. And I am at the point now where I'm just, I, I really feel that when I photograph someone, I should really try to, it's because of the nature of the type of stuff I do. I try to make them look the best they can, mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, oh, well, this is how they are. But you're, su you, you're superimposing your aesthetic on them. No, what I'm saying is for me, I can't, that's not me, but I get what, what Ken's doing. And I think mm -hmm. I, I, I applaud him because what he's doing is exactly what's supposed to be done. I just don't have the, uh, it's just not in me right now. It's just, I can't, I can't, I, I'm just in a different place, but 
but I think you did exactly what's supposed to happen. And um, it's just not me, but I, I but right. I see where you've done what is what is absolutely essential for great uh, classic street photography. You know, I, I, I get it. It's all it, it's all there. It's very yeah, good. Yeah. And believe me, I, I Mark is definitely not by far uh, not the only person who has those thoughts or ideas. Just I mean, because everyone has a certain sense of personal. Um, space that they don't want to be invaded, even in public. Um, and I, I think if you speak to a great deal of uh, street photographers, they have trepidations about this as well, you know, uh, because I have a certain level of, of, there's certain things I won't photograph, right? And, you know, I won't photograph homeless. So, right, no matter, no matter how, uh, you know, what I'm thinking, I, I don't photograph the homeless. Or if I, in fact, think it is worthwhile to photograph it, I will never show it, right? And that's a promise I made to myself, that I will never show it even if I photograph it, you know? So, but, and so that is me understanding where that, that whole thing comes from. Houseless. <laughs> well, I, ugh. okay, so let, let me flip the script. Have you ever been uh, out and about doing what you do? And um, you notice that a street shooter has snapped a picture of you doing what you do. How, how oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I've, I've been walking down the street and seeing people photographing it. Yeah. And? Well, what I think first is, gee, maybe I, <laughs> maybe I should have. Had a, a, you know, flounder maybe I should have shaved. <laughs> yeah, I should have had a, I should have had a flounder in my hand and should have tossed it to them. They would have gotten a better picture, you know, uh, because I always go right back to you know how intrusive it was for the vendors. You know, everybody would come back to class, and be, you know, ten people in the class, and seven of them would have photographs of people on Canal Street selling food. You know, it's just a you know, it's just kind of one of those things where it, it haunted me. It haunts me, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I've seen I've seen people take pictures of me as I've walked, and I, you know, I I haven't heard the click, but I've seen them. You know, I I can see it's a thirty five millimeter, uh, you know, lens, and you know they're aimed up, but they're tilted, you know, so I could see that you know maybe I'm in the corner. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, you at a certain point, if you if you photograph enough, you kind of know what the field of view is. And, uh, you know, and then just after uh, you pass or just before you pass them, you know, they bring the camera down, which means they got the shot. They're checking. They're checking the back, you know. <laughs> so what, are, what are you feeling? Then? Uh, well, I you think you say, said hey, you're something. Hey, you're ready tomorrow, Renee's buddy. No, 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 no. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really kind of torn. You know, part of me goes, all right, someone's taking a still picture. You know, or I go, eh, you know, this is how I look today. But I think a lot of people today are less uh, accepting of this is how I look in public today. We're far more image conscious as a society in general, hence the selfie. And I think people want to be seen in certain ways. And I think that street photography does not lend itself to the way people want to be seen, unless you're in an area where everyone uh, makes sure that they are uh, in their best looking attire and their makeup is done and their hair is perfectly quaffed uh, all the time. Okay, that sounded a bit contradictory. A little, yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, no. What I'm, sa what I'm, sa what I'm saying no. is if you're someplace, I don't know, like, uh, I don't know, uh, Soho on Broadway. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. everybody there. You know, pretty much they're shopping, and they look like they're shopping, and they're you know they're dressed. They already wear the styles for the most part. So you're going to get yeah. a lot of people who are going to be okay. But if you go somewhere like Midtown or even Wall Street, where people are kind of just wearing what they wear to go to work, you know, you might get a little different. Uh, you'll get more natural looks from people because they're not uh, so. Um, aware of themselves in public and they may not be aware of the camera so much and you know they're not they're not practiced at uh looking great you know all the time you know they're practicing looking great but not all the time yeah. I, 
I do that. I don't know about that, Mark. I, I think maybe I, this is a discussion for another that discussion. I think, I'm going to argue that I think 99% of the people who walk outside know what they look like and either accept it as that being not acceptable, but they're going to do it because they need to do something. But for the most part, they're going to check that mirror before they go out. Right. They're but gonna, what I'm saying is... They're going to say I'm acceptable enough or I'm better than acceptable and damn, I'm good. And so they're going to go out. Right. They, right. But the people who are going to go, but the, but the people who are going to go out and because Thursday, they, they've, they've run out of, they run out of great tops or their, you know, their pants aren't right or their good shoes got wet in the rain yesterday or whatever it is. Uh -huh. The people who are just wearing whatever they got because it's Thursday or Friday. Well, not Friday because maybe they're going out after work, but it's Thursday and who cares? Uh, I'm sympathetic to the idea that, you know, maybe maybe Thursday at 5 p.m. in the summer, people are not looking their greatest because I they're think not you're hiding. hiding. Well, you know, I, I think now because all I'm going to do is go home and get dressed. I'm going out tomorrow. I'll wear my nice stuff. No, I mean, like I said, I, I, I think you're I think you're depriving yourself the the joy of, mm -hmm. of you know, like this topic, you know, of finding the unexpected, you know. Like that dude that's in a tuxedo and everybody else is, you know, in gym sweats, you know? Yeah. Well, there's, I think, Greg, what you pointed out that, very that, easily, but you pointed out that, I mean, you, you went to specifically an exhibition, which isn't just even a three-hour game. You went to a small, what, half-hour event, which is a, you know, an exhibition, right? You know, or one individual at the most, you know, how many, I don't know how many people there are, but, you know, it was, you know, it's a time-limited uh, event. And, you know, you found unexpected views of a person performing, you know, I mean, you expected him to jump up and, and you know, shoot the ball into the well, hoop. It was unexpected but you did, because but, it, there was actually a, 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 a tournament basketball game going on there. Right. And between but, games, those guys came on. I wasn't expecting that. I, I didn't go for that. Right. Right. But what I'm saying is, okay, so what you're saying is that you, you, that the, you know, the halftime show or the, the intermission had an unexpected event, but in terms of photographically, once he got on the trampoline, you know, you may have expect, you did, you definitely expected him to make the shot, What you didn't expect was maybe those particular shapes or maybe that particular, uh, he, he missed more than he made to be honest. Right, but but your expectation was for him to make the shot, whether he made the shot or not. No, was not. My my expectation was to capture some unusual images. You know, I got some different angles where he was just it was just him and the skyscrapers. Mm -hmm. You know, I got some shots of you know uh, tight. I went in tighter and I got him. You know, like five feet over the spectators, and the spectators are you know gawking you know up right the sky right now so. everyone's has been a spectator and at this point if you've been to any event you know yeah we can photograph you and blah 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 blah. but the the gentleman performing he understood that no matter what he did he was subject to your lens and countless other lenses so whatever if, you got if, if, if you notice none of those people on the sidelines were taking any pictures of him. right <laughs> well 20 people that were just kind of uh, right. But I mean, you know, how many people were on your side? <laughs> uh, actually, it was just myself and one uh, house photographer. That okay. So, so he knew at least the house photographer would be there. You were, you were the unexpected in that, in that instance. Yeah, for sure. I still okay. think you're hiding, but go ahead. Okay. I mean, you can I'll say I'm hiding, but I, I, I think it's not that I'm hiding. It's that, I mean, it doesn't mean that I don't see these things and go, aha, you know, and I, I don't visually, you know, you know, you do the visual click in your uh, in your head. And I know, Ken, you must That's have done this when problem. you were not carrying your camera and just traveling and there were photographs. You went, uh huh, click. Yep. Uh -huh, click. Because in New York City, there's just stuff going on yep. all the time. Yep. And That's I mean, why you carry the camera with you. So I, well, I, well, well taking, there's times that I do carry the camera. The picture is not photography. Well, well, I mean, if I'm driving kids to a, a a doctor's appointment, you know, I can't just stop and, and, and work. Sometimes I can, you know, do that occasionally, but I don't because I got to get somebody someplace at a certain time. Yeah. But hey, I guys, understand. For the sake of time, let's, um, Mark, let's get to your presentation before we run out of time. <laughs> sure. What I was going to say was we really should cover this. This is, I apologize because it really kind of turned into a discussion that, you know, that whole topic should uh -huh. be a different discussion. Uh -huh. But, um, 
Anyway, we can go to mine. What do we okay. got first? Okay. Here you go, Mark. You're up. All right. Now, Greg, when you proposed this uh, idea, I had another series of photos. It was just the one individual. Uh, uh, but, uh, it, you know, these two uh, young people are part of, uh, they're part of a pageant a few years back uh, called the National American Miss Pageant. And, and I was able to photograph them and they were winning uh, these pageants. And what was really interesting was uh, they don't they don't know that they're winning uh, when they win. They 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 are on stage. There are several other contestants, and they don't know. And you, as, you, as you can see, uh, the winner on the left, you know, once once they knew that they had won, you know, they they pointed up to God like, oh my goodness, this is this is so fantastic. And they, you know, I got other photos in between, but. Then they were still, after being crowned, they were still in shock and in joy and in, and, and, and just so much uh, elation that they won uh, their division of the pageant. And the young person on the right, they didn't know where they were going to win either. So their reaction is different. So that's the unexpected. And then, you know, you, you know, um, you know, you go, Ooh, that they won. And look, you know, look how wonderfully they're responding and look how happy they are. And that's the, Ooh, for me. It's, oh, it's just, they're just so happy. And you know, person on the right, Did you they ever got, get the, the runner up in tears. That's, uh, <laughs> no, usually, and, and I hate to say that's, this, but, but, well, I mean, as anecdotal as that is, what you'll find is that most of the runner ups, tend to be very gracious, at least on stage. I don't know what happens behind, you know, behind the scenes, but certainly on stage, 90% of the time, 99% of the time, the person's very happy for the winner. You know, they know the competition is close. It's it's one of those things where, in all honesty, um, these young people, they put a lot of work into what they do. Uh, you know, it, it, it's not as uh, frivolous as one would think. It's a, you know, it's a competition, yes, but it also teaches good sportsmanship. I mean, it's a real lack of a better way of putting it. It's, uh, it, it's, uh, depending on the type of pageant one participates in, uh, it can be a very enriching experience for the young people involved. Anyway, let's go to the next one. Now you guys have all heard me say, Oh, I shoot sports. I, I used to photograph sports, used to photograph sports. Used to... And I'm not really a uh, golfer. Uh, I'm not really a sports person. I, you know, I jogged a little bit and I, you know, run five Ks and I've skated a half marathon, that kind of thing, but I've never done, you know, those, those, those other sports that most people do. And one of the things that I see a lot is, as I see golf, uh, either, you know, in the afternoon, I'll see it on television. If I'm waiting for the news to come on, I'll see the end of some tournament. Or I'll watch, uh, you know, some comedy about golf. And there's a lot of them, and I think they're, you know, they're funny. So my my idea of golf is kind of the fusion of the two. And this individual was, was golfing, and I'd noticed that they were standing on a ridge, and I had to photograph them. And... The first thing I thought was, oh man, they're in the, the sun is behind them, and I can't get. It's a silhouette, and then I went, oh, there's a stare in a silhouette, and <laughs> and then and then once once he he sort of bent to hit the the ball out of the out of the the, the brush or wherever mm -hmm. it was, the, not the brush, but the the grass that it was in. I realized that between his sneakers and those little tufts of grass, grass, right. Mm -hmm. It kind of looked like he was Charlie Chaplin a little. <laughs> and so my idea of golf, although it's a very serious sport for many, many people, it's kind of the fusion of those those comedies, those golf comedies that I've seen. And uh, it's all third hand. You know, it's like I, I don't play it. You know, I don't you know, it's I don't follow it. But it's it's all this sort of. Uh, it's, it's a sort of a fictionalized idea. And I always see these books in the bookstore about how to get a better golf game. And I hear golf jokes about how people are so, so bad at playing golf. This happens, that happens. So it's a lot of, it's imbued for me with a lot of comedy that probably really only golfers should, should, should know. So that's how I envision it. And I got some really great photographs of the people that, that were there, but, um, 
what was unexpected to me was how my sort of superficial, uh, cynical idea of golf was sort of realized visually for me uh, in a way that I thought was really uh, entertaining. And this isn't the Milan golf. I'm sure it's a great, fun sport. Maybe, maybe one day I'll play. But you know, that was it. That was that was what was unexpected. How how much you know the comedies that I'd seen had had just made me feel that wow, yeah, <laughs> this guy looks like the big bad wolf over his head. <laughs> well, yeah, right. I mean, you know, it's kind of quite a Rorschach test there. But yeah, I see what you said. So yeah, and they always talk about you know how tough it is and so forth. So there's a lot in there. Anyway, then you go to the, the next picture. Yeah, I mean, let's just stay on this for a second because, mm -hmm. um, uh, of course, as you just explained to yourself, you know, your thoughts behind the image. And, of course, my thoughts are absolutely totally different, you know, uh, coming from just a strictly coming from a perspective of just photographing a sport. I have no relationship to your visual idea of Charlie Chaplin. I'm looking at someone swinging a golf club, but it's golf ball and I'm taking it on its own merits. Um, but what I'm also looking at is it only occupies one third, maybe one third and less than one third, but one third of the image where the other two thirds are this abstract thing, you know, uh, which catches my eye, which balances out and causes me to um, just think about the image more than I would have had it just been a, solely about the golfer. Right. Yeah. Right. And there and there is the faux that you know, I'll be 100 percent honest. It's a it's a, you know, a faux border so that one gets a sense of what's going on because it's so contrasty. Uh -huh. But uh, but otherwise, you know, man, I think I dodged his hands a little bit and a little bit, a little bit in the sneakers. Otherwise, that's that's a straight. Yeah, I, I honestly, man, um, all your your information and your input is great, but I'm I'm just actually willing to dump it. Um, and take the image on its own merits because I enjoy the those little pieces of grass near his feet, which mm -hmm. he references slippers. Okay, so mm. that that's where I'm going with that. And yes. you know, although I know he's not wearing slippers, they just right. be reference slippers. So therefore, I'm thinking that. And also, of course, it makes a relationship to the uh, the foliage which is above his head. So it links them together for right. me visually. Right. So. I'm, I'm like that, and so... so it's, al it's almost like he's playing at dawn. Uh, I'm sorry? Well, Thanks. I mean, I guess there's so much dark area above above his, his, his head that the it's kind of like night, and then you've got slippers and... You know. mm, well, no, I mean, there's enough information for me to understand that that's probably trees above his head. Those are trees. Okay. Right? Uh, so it's not that. It's just the what you've, what you've created within this image... Uh, intrigues me to the point where your backstory is almost not needed for me. Right. You know, I'm enjoying the image on its own. And and okay. for, for and your input, I'm going to just not accept it, although it's valid <laughs> for you. For me, I'm just going to enjoy the image on its own because when I look at it, of course, as we always speak, we're bringing our own sensibilities to it. So I'm just right, going to right. continue to bring my own sensibilities to it. I understand yours, but I'm just going to continue <laughs> to to enjoy it for what I for what I visually like about it. That is fair enough and very much accepted. If you still like the image, then that's even better for me. Yeah. Okay, Greg, All you right. got anything? I like the idea of the chaplet thing and his uh, non sports aesthetic, but uh, no, I got nothing. Okay. Cool shot. Cool shot. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, Mark, you want to go into the third then? Yeah, the, the, the last one. Okay. Uh, I will make a very long story super short for you. Uh, you probably, I don't know if we've said this, but Greg and I, uh, we actually met on a uh, Pratt in Israel uh, photojournalism uh, course that we took in the summer of 1985. Yeah, and Obscura. Yeah. Yeah, it was a it was a Pratt it was a Pratt course, right? It was a whole an entire summer in Israel at the Camera Obscura. We uh studied photojournalism there, is what they said. So that's what we did. And uh so there what we did was one weekend, because we were there for uh like a it was a little over a month, right? It was like I don't remember how long, but one of the weekends 
we uh, a, a couple of us went to uh, Egypt. Now back then, I don't know if they still have it now, but you could you could get on a tour bus from Tel Aviv to 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 Cairo. Uh, you know, on a on a Friday morning, and then you could return. Was it like Sunday or Monday or something like that, and it's probably Sunday, and uh, you could just go spend the weekend in uh, Cairo. And as long as your passport was in order, you were, you know, good to go. Um, when we uh, got to, I well, went through the Sinai, you get to Egypt and then you go to uh, Giza where the pyramids are. One of the things you notice, uh, which is sort of outside of Cairo, Cairo is a huge city. I'm sure it's even more modern now than it was. But um, one of the things that's really interesting is you know, like here in the United States, we have rural areas that have the rolling hills or sometimes these, you know, big plains. When you when you go to uh, to, to Egypt, you know, the suburbs are, at least they were, just rather like they were desert in many instances. And um, so what I uh, thought was really interesting is when we tried to, fo- when I tried to photograph, you know, kind of what was going on locally, I think we stopped at a, at a papyrus shop, you know, and I'm walking, you know, walking around taking pictures for about a half an hour while the people on the bus got a chance to, you know, buy papyrus and genuine or, you know, souvenirs before you get to the pyramid. Uh, excuse me, that was when we took the tour. That was when we took the tour while we were in Cairo. We took the tour, went to, to, to Giza. And so, you know, you look and go, wow, it's like an almost like an old Western town. And we went and it was, I think, July. And it's absolutely just scorching. And, you know, I saw these guys just sort of reclining and, you know, I took a couple of photos, but I remember what was unexpected to me about this was I didn't expect the architecture to look like this. You know, I, I just didn't expect it. I just didn't know what to expect. I didn't expect uh, the amount of rubble there was uh, near these buildings. I didn't expect to see individuals just sort of, you know, enjoy just trying to stay out of the heat like anywhere else where it's a hot place. Uh, and because I was young and, and very, uh, you know, we didn't have the internet, no. Uh, I didn't expect to see horses as much as, you know, I as we did. You know, the horses and the camels are there for the tourists. <laughs> and, you know, so I, I was unexpected. And I went, oh, wow, this is great. So I took my, my camera and I remember very distinctly thinking, I wish I had a wide lux camera. And a wide lux, I think can't explain before, is a panoramic camera camera that takes a film photo uh, in a panoramic form. And I just took a pic- couple of pictures anyway. There's that, and there's a couple other pictures of the things that are interesting. And then finally, 36 years later, uh, for a throwback Thursday on my uh, Facebook page, I finally scanned it, and I cropped it to fit the Facebook cover. And... Uh, that was the, ooh, I was like, wow, after 36 years, I finally got the photograph very close to the way I envisioned it when I first took it, because it always bothered me uh, when I processed the film and looked at it, that I didn't have that 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 slim horizontal format that I really wanted for a lot of those photos there, because I wanted to show just sort of the landscape. And that's really it. So it's kind of a unexpected and then also, ooh, in a very separate way. I think the other ones, I, you know, it, it talked about unexpected and, 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 and ooh in, in different ways. But I think this one is probably it's uh, the biggest expanse of time in between the unexpected and the ooh. That's it. Yeah. So tell me how you, what within this image, and I, you may have just said it, but I'll ask you to maybe say it a different way. What within this image held with you through all these years for you to have the image resurface again? Because it seems you 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 pulled it out of the archive um, because of a technological advancement in society, which is social media. Had it not been for that social media construct, would you have pulled it out of your archive? Uh, no, actually, what happened was, uh, uh, in in all honesty. Uh, because I have not been uh, doing the type of photography I usually do, which is portraiture and that kind of thing. I started looking at some old slides that I had just to kind of uh, to see what's going on. And in all honesty, 
you know, Greg's been after me for a couple of years now. Go through your old stuff from Israel and Egypt. Go through it. You got to go through it. Mm -hmm. So because he's been like after me and I, okay. you know, and I looked and I went, eh, let's see what he's, what he's got there. And then when I saw it again, I went, you know, I remember this. Okay. <laughs> so that, that was really it. You know, okay. I mean, this, when, was, when was the last time you saw this image or at least you, you before today, before you last saw it? I mean, between, uh, pull it I out. Would, I would say about, <laughs> I'd say about two and a half years ago. Okay. And, you know, we weren't doing anything like this. So there was really no reason. I didn't have a, a little, you know, cheap throwaway scanner then either. And it was sort of like, what am I, I going to do that for? Okay. So I had purchased a scanner so I could get some of the old-fashioned stuff that I had done in the uh, 80s and early 90s scanned. Um, just so I could kind of see what they looked like compared to what I've, what I've done with the pageantry in the, in the 21st century. You know, kind of, you know, see what's going on in, in terms of my artistic vision. Uh -huh. See how it's changed and how it hasn't. Yep. And... Uh, so while I'm looking through all this stuff, you know, you know how it is. You 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 sort of you open, you go through the archives, and you you know it's your own rabbit hole of uh, imagery. Yeah. And uh, yeah. You know. And, mem I, and memories. Yeah, and memories. And when I saw this one again, I went, yeah, you know, I remember this because before, you know, you look at oh, this is stuff from here and all that stuff, uh -huh. and I because I had no way to scan them, so it didn't matter, you know. So uh -huh. like, oh yeah, I got slides. I got lots of slides. Uh -huh. So that's really it. Okay. Great. Looks like New Mexico. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, you want to uh, sort of sign Would us Would you prefer to show show a photograph of the pyramids? I could do that for you if you like. Oh, oh, no, no, no. no, no. I, I, <laughs> I understand what you're saying. I think, you know, with all that's going on and you're like right, right there in the Mecca in New York, it's just, like you said, it's a Plethora. It's, it's a lot. It's just target rich, but you do. Well, I, I, no. To speak to that, I think you're absolutely right. But I'm I'm really in a place now where what I have to do, what I do do, has to be has to fit into a schedule. I'm still I'm still very much engaged in 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 the parenting process with my kids, and 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 that's really it. You know, yeah. it's just all there is to it. Yeah. You okay. Uh, if you can, if you what you say, if you if you say you can, you can. If you say you can't, you can't. It's what you do with it. All right, that's about all I got. Um, you know, there's cameras you could put in your pocket or put you under your lapel. But uh, unexpected. All I got to do, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I said it before. Get out <laughs> there, take pictures, explore your camera, get get used to uh, you know the the way the machine works. And, um, man, it's a big world out there, you know, and things are happening all the time. You never know what people are going to do. And if you don't have your camera with it, you'll, with you, you'll never capture it. So uh, that's all I get. See the unexpected, you know, and uh, there are lots of ooh moments out there. And uh, I say find them. They are out, they are out there. Just got to get out there and find them. That's it for Photography Talk with Three Black Pratt grads. I'm Greg Claycorn. That's Kitty Nelson. That's Mark Skinner. Please subscribe. Just leave us a message. You know, let, let us know your thoughts, ideas for topics, and uh, ring that bell so that you know when uh, a new episode is posted. That's it for me. Take a good care. Keep shooting.